Her Royal Highness, Princess Elizabeth. In wishing you all good evening, I feel that I am speaking to friends and companions who have shared with my sister and myself many a happy children's hour. Today we are honored to welcome acclaimed British author Jane Dismore, who just wrote a book called Princess, The Early Life of Queen Elizabeth II. It's a brilliant book Thank and you. we're so excited to welcome you to our show. <laughs> Thank you. It's lovely to be here, Marlies. And this is the, the British uh, version That's of the right. book. That's mm right. -hmm. And there's two versions uh, in the United States. This is, this is the book that has been published, correct? That's right. I read the book. I couldn't put it down. Oh, good. Oh, good. Being a huge Anglophile, you know, I'm very, very obsessed with the British family, <laughs> so I find it all very fascinating. What, what I picked up from the book, especially from her uh, Princess Elizabeth's birth on, was that she was the original people's princess. She was, yes. But her mother didn't want her to be because, of course, in the early years, there was no inkling that she was going to become queen. Exactly. You know, her uncle was the Prince of Wales. He was supposed to be marrying and having an heir who would become king. And the notion of her becoming queen was just, you know, it's a long, long, long way off in the future. So when she was born, of course, she was born to the Duke and Duchess of York, mm -hmm. who were later King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. But the Duchess of York didn't want her to be in the limelight too much. Mm -hmm. But of course, people, you're absolutely right in saying she was the people's princess in as much as everyone wanted to see her. It seemed like from her infancy, she was beloved by the British public. She absolutely was. And in fact, when um, she was just 14 months old, the um, royal family, or the Duke and Duchess of York as they still were, moved into here, not the intercontinental, but it was then 145 Piccadilly which sadly was destroyed in the war, but this is absolutely where that is it stood. And they had just been on a tour, a six month tour of Australia and New Zealand. So they left Princess Elizabeth just a few months old. They left her with her royal grandparents, mm -hmm. George V and Queen Mary, and with her mother's parents, the Earl and, and uh, Countess of Strathmore. They went off on their tour for six months. And when they came back in, in June, 20, uh, 1927, the princess was uh, 14 months old and they moved in here to 145 Piccadilly and it was extraordinary. There was a balcony just outside and they were called, they couldn't get away from it. it thousands of people outside welcoming them back from their tour and to see them holding their little girl. Mm -hmm. And it was very emotional because the country knew that they hadn't seen her for six months. So they went onto the balcony here and the crowds outside in Piccadilly were just going mad. And I think it was a, a, a good practice, although of course she was too young to know it, yes. for what would come in the future. She was very much a monarch in the making without knowing it from a very early age on, her maturity that she showed. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you attribute that to her mother? In the book, you talk a lot about the values that she instilled in her yes. and the sense of manners and appropriateness and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like she took to it from a very early age on. She did. I mean, from the age of 10, of course, that's when she knew that she was going to be queen sooner than she thought. And, and of course, at that point, her father, George the, the VI, after the abdication, um, started to groom her for her role. But up to the age of 10, she, yes, because she was in the limelight, even, even then, even as a very small child, um, her grandmother, Queen Mary, and her mother made her realise that she was there not for her own good, but, you know, for, for other people. And I think she was always told that she must think of other people. You know, she, she was not a spoilt child at all, mm -hmm. and I know she was born into immense privilege. I mean, how greater privilege can you get than right. being a member of, of a royal family. But she was always reminded that it's not for you. Um, one day she was taken to the theatre by yes, Queen I Mary. Yes, I love this story. Yes. 
and they watched a, a play, I think it was Peter Pan, mm -hmm. and um, afterwards she said, oh, Granny, she said, all those people will be waiting for us when we, when we come out, won't, won't they? And uh, we, you know, we mustn't disappoint them. And Granny was not impressed by that. <laughs> and Queen Mary turned around and told her lady-in-waiting to take her to the car, out the back way, and that was it, and take her Because it's home. not about you. Yeah, it's not about you. It's not about you. I enjoyed the stories of um, how they didn't want to be spoiled, so at Christmas time, their gifts can come from Harrods or Woolworths, yes. which is a five-and-dime <clears throat> store, Absolutely. what we call in America a five-and-dime store. So did they actually go to Woolworths and buy yes. toys? Yes. Um, her... First of all, the, uh, the, the Countess of Strathmore, she, she um, didn't mind where she took them. When they stayed in, in Scotland at Glam's, which was the Bowes Lion House, um, apart from the Hertfordshire one, yes, she would take them shopping. She would go into bookshops and, and other ordinary shops with them. And then when they got Marion Crawford, who was the, uh, her governess, um, she was a very staunch uh, Scottish Presbyterian lady who didn't believe in spoiling the children at all and would refuse to be you know overly impressed by anything around <laughs> her right we might be living in a palace but you know let's just get used to it okay <laughs> nothing special about that and she would yeah she would take them out to Woolworths you know and they'd have some pocket money they've got pocket money and they would buy strings of beads or or bath salts it wasn't all yes of course they did get their stuff from Harrods <laughs> uh, as well but their own Christmas presents were often just something quite ordinary. Yeah. And so speaking of special gifts that were given to them, because I, I read that um, uh, the royal protocol was most gifts had to be given back to charities, yes. uh, unless they were deemed specific royal gifts, like the yes. por silver porringer Por yes. that was given to them. But what I absolutely loved was the playhouse that was built for Princess Elizabeth. Can you yeah. tell us about that? Oh, that was an extraordinary gift from the Welsh people. And it was for her sixth birthday. And it was built to scale for a six-year-old child. <laughs> so it was just, it wasn't your sort of doll's house that, although she had probably lots of those, because mm -hmm. Queen Mary loved those. Yes. Um, but it was a proper size house. And, and Margaret apparently liked running up and down the stairs and <laughs> keep pulling the plug out because the, the sinks and, and the loos worked apparently. Mm -hmm. and, That's uh, incredible. So she was, yeah. It must have been sad to grow out of that house. Can it you imagine? I'd still be there today. Oh, yes, I'd be curled yes. up in the corner going, this is my house. Yes. <laughs> and of course, they, and she learned, of course, to be housewifely because <laughs> at the time, um, you know, the women, women of, of Britain wanted <clears> to see, especially during, during the war, mm -hmm. uh, wanted to see that, that she was able to do house, housely, wifely things. Yes, um, I found that was, interesting mm, that that was the, the prominent mm, attribute that they wanted to see in the women during World War II yeah. was that you make good homemakers and can, yes, you, yes, can cook and clean. Yes. And you see, I think that the, the Duchess of York um, was, was largely behind that. I think probably she wanted the papers to present that yes. sort of um, interesting image. Uh, talk to me about the 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 fire that happened as it was making yes. its way to yeah. Princess Elizabeth's home. Before it was actually given to her outright, it was going to be taken from Wales to London to be on show for a little while. Oh, okay. And en route, um, it, was, it was resting one night overnight on its, on its journey, and um, it was set on fire, or it caught fire, and part of it was, a lot of it was damaged oh. and had to be rebuilt. And some of the things inside, I think they were going, they were traveling separately. So I think the items in the house weren't actually mm -hmm. affected. And there was definitely a notion that somebody Foul had done play. it. Yeah, that somebody had done it deliberately. What a brilliant queen and inspirational queen she's been. I think she we has. can raise our glasses. Raise our glasses, absolutely. Toast, not only to Queen Elizabeth II, but to your brilliant book, who Thank I hope you. all our viewers <laughs> will go out and buy, whether you're in Britain or in the United States or wherever, look for it. Uh, where can we find it? On Amazon.com? On Amazon, in, in, in good bookshops, yeah. Excellent. Yes, it's yes, a, it's a brilliant read. I, I felt like I learned so much about the Queen's early life and, Thank you. and really was uh, a wonderful read. Brilliant book. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And we would like to thank, give special thanks to the Intercontinental Hotel, London Park Lane, for presenting us with this beautiful royal afternoon tea in honor of the Queen and in honor of your wonderful book. 
and a, in this beautiful suite. So thank you yes, so much to the Intercontinental you. Hotel. And now we are going to enjoy the afternoon tea <laughs> that they've set before us. Very much so. Cheers. Cheers. Good night, children. Good night, and good luck to you all.